beautiful day we had eight fresh inches of snowfall last night eight more two nights before eight coming tonight yeah it's freaking snowmageddon so anyway protech asked me to put together a video on how to snow plow in a skid loader for some of you noobs out there that may be just getting into the industry hopefully this video will help you out and if you've been in the business for a while please comment down below and add your wisdom because a lot of you guys have so much knowledge, we'd love to hear from you guys. Now, a couple of the things we're gonna be covering today is noob mistakes. Just. Hey, Sam. hey, can you make one pass with your bucket angled the wrong way for me? Just common stuff that guys may be doing, and maybe not so common stuff too. I mean, I've seen guys after four or five months of operating still make these mistakes and we're gonna stop you guys from doing that. Other thing we're gonna be talking about is when you're snow plowing in a skid loader, when to understand when you are the primary snow mover and when you are the secondary or assistant to the primary snow mover. Also, how to operate when you work on a team and then how to snow plow when you're not on a team and you're just out there all by yourself. So we got a lot of ground to cover. What are we waiting for? Let's do this thing. Welcome to paradise you guys. All right, today we're going to be talking about how to plow in a skid loader with a pusher attachment and there's two very different ways to handle it. One way is when you're working by yourself and the other way is when you're working on a team. And there's completely different concepts and we're going to talk in depth about that so by the time you're done with this video you guys, you should be able to safely and easily plow a parking lot in a skid loader the right way. There is a right way and a wrong way, and let's get into it right now. All right, you guys, if you're plowing snow in a skid loader and you're working as part of a team, you've got to size up who you're working with. Now, in this case, we've got a TLB. No, that's not a TLB, that's a payloader. There's a TLB, and you can see that this equipment is outfitted with pretty much the main pushing equipment. Now when you're in a skid loader, you're gonna have one of three attachments on. You're gonna have a bucket like this one has on right here. You're gonna have a pusher attachment like a Protect Fusion Edge pusher or a different attachment, or you're gonna have a snow plow. Now when you work as a member of a team, you would typically think that a skid loader with a pusher attachment is going to be your fastest piece of equipment and in all, for all practical purposes, it actually is, unless you're working with people that have bigger attachments, and then you become the secondary piece of equipment. Let me explain. In this case, because we've got monster size equipment that's busy moving a lot of snow, like that loader over there, the skid loader's job at that point is to get into the nooks and crannies, the crevices. And this is where a skid loader becomes ultimately important because you see this light pole right here? You see how he circled around that light pole? He hasn't moved the snow very far away. We've got another island right in the background right over there. You can see that he's literally circled around the islands and his job is not to be the main snow mover. His job is to get into all of the crevices that the bigger equipment, the trucks, like I've got right here, the loaders, and the other big equipment can't possibly get into. 
the most nimble piece of equipment on the job site is the skid loader and therefore it becomes one of the most important pieces of equipment and so when you've got the right tool and attachment on then you need to make sure that you're complementing the other pieces of equipment that are out on that job site now in this case you can see that he's going through and getting everything prepped for the loaders to do their job next so if you're in a skid loader and you're working on a team the way we have it set up let's look at what we've actually got done the skid loader comes through and he pulls and back drags away from all of the corners that's his job his main goal is to do nothing more than to back drag the snow away from the corners so that the other loaders and trucks can get in here because we can't it's not possible for us to get in here efficiently and so in this case we actually outfit the skid loader with a smaller bucket but now if you're plowing by yourself you become the main snow mover and it's critical that you get a bigger attachment so that you can move more snow faster now what's underneath the snow can be worse than the snow itself now in this instance we had rain that then converted to snow so the lots froze and there's pure ice as we clear the snow we're actually making it more slippery and difficult to operate so be aware of that as you're running a piece of equipment that just because the snow's gone doesn't mean you're going to start getting the best possible traction those pro cleats that's icy on. Because the actual pavement, which typically should be very sticky and give you a lot of traction, is now pure ice, he's got to be extra careful when working around parked cars, especially in a situation just like this. All right, before we get too deep into today's video, one of the things that I want to talk about is some words of wisdom that I've gathered from 30 plus years of snow plowing. One of the things, you always put your best equipment operator in your best piece of equipment. Sometimes guys will take their very best equipment operator and put them in a mediocre or average piece of equipment thinking that they're leveling out their playing field. Don't ever do that. If you've got a smoking operator, let that dude have the fastest piece of equipment and burn through it. He's going to set the pace for everybody else. And when everybody else sees what this guy can do, everybody else is going to work just a little bit harder trying to keep up with that guy. Let him go. Give him the best piece of equipment. The other piece of advice that I can give you is that if you break down, which will happen, make sure you carry a lot of spare tools, but more importantly, make sure that you understand whether that breakdown is repairable on the spot or something that should be done later on. If the breakdown takes you more than a half an hour or an hour to repair, it might be best to abandon that piece of equipment and call in reinforcements. And the reason I say this is the guy that breaks down usually isn't the guy that repairs the piece of equipment. And what will happen is another guy, if you're working on a team, will come in to repair the guy that's broke down. Now instead of having just one piece of equipment not running, you have two pieces of equipment not running. And in fact, I've pulled up onto a site where I've had three pieces of equipment not running because the guy, one guy's trying to fix it, one guy's watching, and then the guy that's trying to fix it called in another guy that has more skill than the guy that's watching. And now I've got three guys working on one broken piece of equipment. What we do in our company is we actually keep one backup piece of equipment and you guys are gonna go, what? And I actually keep mul multiple backup pieces of equipment but I usually keep at least one, maybe even two pieces of equipment not running, just ready to go because inevitably something's going to break down and I can grab a fresh piece of equipment as long as I got a good operator and throw that guy in there and keep the show rolling. So those are a few of the things I wanna talk about before we get too deep, deep into today's video, but let's get into how to snow plow when you are not the primary snow mover Next, now you're gonna see we put on a snow bu or a dirt bucket. You'll probably have a snow bucket on, but the point is we put on a smaller bucket to drive home the point that he's not the primary snow mover and he's the assistant. And let's get into that mind frame now. It's a completely different mind frame. Right now, if this guy in this skid loader 
you can see him what he's doing right there he's outlining all of the curves and he's got a mid-sized bucket on he doesn't have a major snow bucket on he's got a mid-sized bucket on and we do that on purpose because that gives him the ability to get right into the corners to get exactly what he's doing Now what he's doing is pushing the snow into the drive lanes. By outlining the curbs, the big equipment can move in, grab that snow, and do straight line shots, getting it to its final destination much faster. Now in this case, he's not the main snow mover, you guys. His job is a complimentary job. So understand if you're on a team and you've got bigger equipment, you may not be the main snow mover. Watch him work around this light pole right here, you guys. For bigger equipment that's less nimble, light poles can be a real nuisance. So by outlining light poles, you give the bigger equipment an easier straight line He's run and everything perfectly. just goes faster. Perfectly, perfectly. Now that loader right behind him, We'll come in and do the main snow moving. And that loader can't do what the skid loader is doing. It can't get into all of the crevices. That's why in this case, the teamwork is a critical element to the success and to actually speed things up. So in this case, having a smaller bucket on the loader, on the skid loader, is actually a big bonus. Because it frees up the main loader to do the majority of the snow moving. But if you're not working with a bigger loader, you're gonna see how to do that next. So while he's moving the main snow pile, that loader's moving the main snow, the skid is getting everything ready to let the main loader do its job. All right, so now let's go look at how you plow differently when you are the main piece of equipment on a lot. It is a different mind frame. Woo! And you guys, it's a balmy, I think three degrees out. I don't know what the temp is out. I know my cheeks hurt right now. It can't be too warm. That's never a good sound. I don't like the sound of crashing when we're out plowing. All right, let's go to the next lot and check out how we do it differently when we have a pusher on. All, time. All four tires stay on the ground. This pusher, floats independently of the machine. I want to show you guys this. See how that, that pusher floats completely independently of the machine. So that, yes, right there. So now the pusher's got its own weight and the machine, all four tires stay on the ground. That's a huge thing, you guys. Something to know when you're working with a pusher. Depends on what push is on. This is the Fusion Edge. This has got some advanced technology. You may have static pushers. A static pusher, you use a little bit of a different technique. You have to uh, gauge your down pressure with a static pusher. And why am I yelling? Why do I always yell when I film these things? Are you guys all hard of hearing? All right, guys. With a static pusher. It really, I am still stuck on why I yell when I film these things. All right, with a static pusher, you guys, you do have to apply down pressure, but you gotta get it just right. With one of these floating pushers, it's not as critical because the weight of the pusher itself does the work for you. What's really important is to keep all four tires on the ground at all times. When you keep all four tires on the ground, you're gonna have the absolute best traction possible. Way better traction than you are if you're going to be pushing, working with a snow bucket or another unit where you see guys who push way down. Guys, Jake has no clue what we're filming or why. Sorry, it's dark, but that's when you snow plow. I don't think he's going to want to get out of his piece of equipment. You don't want to get out, do you? No way. <laughs>
<laughs> All right, do you know what we're filming? No. All right, we are filming how to snow plow a parking lot in a skid loader. Is there a difference when you snow plow a parking lot by yourself than when you snow plow with a loader or a truck or another piece of equipment? Yes. Okay. So we are in agreement. All right, what is the main difference? I'd be doing more things to help myself, but if I were to be working with someone, I'd be pulling everything out and then having the bigger thing come by and just keep pulling everything out of there. Exactly. So now you, so you said that, he actually said that right. So it's as when you're working on a team, your job is secondary as the snow mover in a skid loader. Now, and as a primary snow mover, which is what you're technically set up as right now. So there's a difference when you have a, when you have like a Protec Fusion Edge pusher on, you become the primary snow mover. And your responsibility is not only to catch all your corners and crevices, but also then to actually move the snow out. And we're gonna show these guys exactly what we mean. So uh, on a lot like this, how do you approach this lot? I would start with curbs get all the curbs cleaned out and all the corners, pull it all out, and then after that, it's just kind of pushing snow. Okay, so one of the most important things you gotta remember, you guys, is if you can push snow over the curbs. In our job sites, we can't. We can't push snow over any curb line ever, right? No. So we're gonna back drag everything away from all of the curb lines and corners, and then you, as the primary mover of snow, is gonna to start to push it all the way across the lot to its final destination, which in that case, I mean, we don't, we, our lots are gonna be a little different. A lot of you guys are gonna be able to push snow right over the curbs. One of the caution warning signs you guys need to know is if you push snow up and over a curb, don't grab the sod underneath. Don't grab the decorative rock underneath. Don't push snow on top of bushes because spring will eventually come <laughs> and I'll be picking up the rocks. <laughs> and you'll be preparing <laughs> sod. And you'll be doing a lot of unnecessary work that if you were just extra cautious, you would have never had to do in the first place. So that's one of the main warning signs. If you go to push snow over curb lines, be careful and conscious of what's underneath it because you can damage it and have big repair bills in the spring, right? Right. All right, so let's set a GoPro up on your piece of equipment. And then let's, I'm going to put the uh, drone in the air and then, um, oh, yeah, whoa. And then we're going to show these it. guys how <laughs> to do it. Now that we got the musical montage out of the way, let's actually teach you guys something. So you always start clearing a lot the, at the furthest point away from your push pile. That way as you clean the lot, you're not recrossing over and working in an area twice. So in this case, right next to the building is the furthest point away from our push pile. Our, our building's on the right, the push pile's on the left, so he starts at this point and he clears away all of the edges. And then once he gets these edges done, he's gonna start doing the main moving of the snow. He never wants to cross back over the lot or replow an area that he's already covered. Let's break this down a little bit further. If he happened to start clearing this lot right next to the push pile, then when he went back to get this edge, he would be crossing back over an area that he already cleared. Super inefficient. By clearing the lot at the furthest point away from the push pile, he never has to go back and touch that area again. So make sure you guys understand where your final destination is and where your starting point is. Hopefully this helps clear it up. Again, let's repeat this. If he started clearing the lot right next to the push pile, then when he had to grab the snow that you see him grabbing now, he would be recrossing it. There's no reason in snow plowing the same spot twice. 
Now, a lot of you guys are going to be jumping up and down yelling, why are you snow plowing while it's snowing? Well, in this very particular account that we have, we have super high maintenance accounts, meaning we have zero tolerance. We're not allowed to let any snow gather on our accounts. So that means that even while it's snowing, we have to be clearing lots. Some of you guys will experience that. Some of you guys won't. You'll have accounts that when it's done snowing, hey, you can go to work. That doesn't happen to be the case for us. The most important thing you guys need to remember is to work efficiently. Just move the snow one time and clear at clear. start clearing as far away from your push pile as possible so you're not recrossing over it. Boy, that was long. You don't go vertical to your snow pile. You clear out your spots first, and then you push towards it, and you start from the furthest point away, and then you work in, because as you're working your way in, you're inevitably gonna get the windrow. You want the windrow to be where you haven't plowed yet. Yep. All right? So I don't know if that's clear or not, but hopefully it is, because if you just start pile driving through the center of it, all you're doing is creating a, it's, it's a mangled mess. It's a you mega mess. There just doing random stripes, it doesn't work. It does not work. So you gotta have a pattern. Every have you ever gone into a parking lot that didn't have a pattern? With random new kids. Yeah. <laughs> well they don't know. <laughs> yeah. Every single parking lot has a pattern. Uh -huh. There is no parking and the pattern is it could be the same if you're working with somebody or it could be completely different. So you got to look at what the pattern, figure out what the pattern of your parking lot is. And would you say that knowing a good pattern will speed up your time by? Uh, at least a fraction of the time, for sure. Right. Yeah. Just by going and doing something where you know it works rather than trying to randomly do and and most most parking lots you can just look at and figure out a pattern pretty quick before you get started and then it's important to take a few minutes and to get the rest of your team involved in the same pattern yep. right so if you're working with a new kid we always pair up a veteran with a new kid right yeah and then we have them you guys work together and show the pattern and then talk about the pattern because that's huge the pattern makes the biggest difference in the world to your overall productivity. Hopefully you guys can see me. I don't know if you can. All right. All right. Um, that's all I got. You got anything else, Jake? Uh, nope. Okay. Hey, uh, so quick question for you. How do you like this, this pusher? I like it a lot. Yeah? Yeah. You've that's... used plows. You've used buckets. You've used other pushers. Yep. And is this in the middle of the pack, bottom, top? This is lower, higher on, higher on the top end of what I've, what I've used. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, okay, yeah. how about this sliding up and down thing? Because these go up and down. Yep. Yeah, I like it. Mean, that kind of lets you float separately than the lot, doesn't it? Yeah, let you really know where your bucket is when you're pushing, putting it down and up. It lets you know. It lets you know. <laughs> what about the, it's got you know, all these individual uh, blades in it. Are you noticing that that contour is still a lot good? Pretty good, yeah. I mean, even the random little dips, it gets down in there pretty good. It does. Okay. Yeah. Well, good to know. You're the only one that's ran it, so I just got to take your word for it. I can see what you're doing, but I can't feel it. So yeah. it's working out fine, huh? I, I like it. All right, you guys. And a big thanks goes out to ProTech because these are the guys that said, hey, Stan, we want to do a video on how to plow a parking lot in a skid loader. Would you work on that for us? And I says, yeah, absolutely, for sure. So big thanks goes out to ProTech, out to Jared. That's the, my contact there. Maybe it won't be your contact. Maybe it will be. 
but we're trying out this Protect Fusion Edge snow pusher, first time this year. And uh, so far, my son-in-law, that's weird saying that, dude. <laughs> you can call me dad in Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is that even a real thing to call a person? All right, comment down below. What should what should Jake call me? Should he call me daddy? That, that's that's what Johnny's always like. Where's where's your daddy? Where's, <laughs> where's your daddy at? <laughs> So in this parking lot, the skid loader is basically serving the loader, getting it lined up so he can go back and forth in a straight line without doing any jockeying. So these guys are working together as a team. Because that loader just is not as maneuverable as that skid loader is. bucket all the way on the ground getting that bucket lined up exactly right is almost as critical as anything else you guys can do there's a right way and a wrong way to use these things and if he angles that bucket backwards he's gonna lose a lot of that pile hey Sam Hey, can you make one pass with your bucket angled the wrong way for me? Which way? Tip like... it backwards? Yeah, I want to show these guys how you can lose so much snow. All right, you guys, now you're going to see how to do it wrong. And it's easy because you can't really see. doing it the right you can go back to doing it the right way now wrong, wrong enough for you yeah wrong, wrong enough for me <laughs> um flipping cold flipping cold the snow dog is kicking butt snow dog is kicking butt see that there's a couple things wrong with this picture. You never draw, you never plow with your front tires off the ground. There's too much pressure on the hydraulics. And you never leave snow in a lot that's already been plowed. That's better. A little bit off the ground, not great. But a lot off the ground, not okay. And once a lot is done, don't go leaving your dribbles behind for the next guy to clean up. That next guy is you. So you guys, we got a couple new guys this season that we're training in. Jordan is one of them. And I just found him picking snow up and carrying it. So let's go have a talk with him. One thing that we just talked about, I gotta, I just want to make sure we're all clear for the camera because we're teaching guys how to snow plow a parking lot and you're perfect. You're perfect for this. So guys, meet Jordan. Jordan, meet the guys. Um, you were just carrying snow. You literally picked up this bucket of snow and you were carrying it across. Yep. Now, typically on a dirt job, that's how you do things, but on a snow job, you never do things. You never pick up a bucket of snow, you guys. 
because you're wasting time. He can put 15, 20, maybe 30 of those buckets down in one spot and then just come behind it and push. Just push. And then you're doing 15, 20 times the yep. amount of work. Yep. Right? But with the bucket on, your job isn't to move slow. Your job is just to clear corners, which yep. is what you're doing. But we're also now going into the second phase of the cleanup. We started last night. Yep. Now we're continuing at the night. And now all we're doing is touching everything up. And so when you come into a lot like this, yeah. you may be by yourself. And one of the things that a lot of guys do when they're by themselves, they get into the mind frame of they're still working on the team. And then they scoop this out and they push it out and then they leave it. Did you see that happen last night? Yeah. Yeah, it happened like several times. Yeah, several times. and I'm not saying it was you because no. I don't think it was you. I think no. it was somebody else, yeah. right? Because we got a couple new guys. Um, so when you guys come into a parking lot and you're all by yourself and there's nobody else out here. Here, you want to hold this? Yeah. Let's go over here so we can hear. So you come into the parking lot and you're all by yourself and there's nobody else out here. You can't just pile, put a little pile of snow here and a little pile of snow there and expect the magic snow fairy to come clean it up. You've got to actually take the time to put the pile strategically and then before you leave that lot, if nobody comes to give you assistance, then it becomes your job to move them to their final destination. Now here's another thing. Sometimes it's just smarter to move it to the final destination. Sometimes it's just smarter if we're clearing this curb line right here, right? We're clearing this up, just put it right in the pile. Don't put it out here, just put it a little bit further and get it done, especially if you don't see anybody else working alongside you. Now, if you got somebody right there alongside you, well, do what you gotta do. You, then you know what to do. We've already covered that. So. Teamwork goes a mega long ways, but you've also got to be able to judge when teamwork takes precedence, when you're by yourself, how you snowplow, because they are completely different techniques. I hope this video has helped you guys out. Jordan, has any of this helped you out? It has a lot. I watched all your past videos and without them I'd be lost on how to plow. Sweet, I think he's kissing my butt. <laughs> God bless you guys. Go get them and check out these videos right here. And it's going to get down to negative. The high is going to be negative. Yeah. So we've got to scrape this whole thing because what will happen is any of this, these little rivets right here, like this right here, you see this? That'll freeze into solid ice. And if we don't, if we don't clear it now, it won't be cleared. All right. You got it. Don't, don't, hey, don't forget your headphones. Yeah. I got to get back at it. All right, you guys, some last words of wisdom for you is always dress like you're going to be broke down because one of the times you go out to work, you will be broke down and you don't want to be the guy standing on the sideline with your hands in your pocket shaking. You want to be the guy that's trying to help out. So dress for the worst possible scenario. Tons more advice to you guys, but they're going to be in the comments down below. So check out what some of the experienced operators are saying down there. And if you guys will do me a big favor and share this video and comment and watch these two videos here. And one last thought for you guys, God bless and go get them and stay safe out there. Oh, you know what? And thanks to ProTech. Without their help, this video would not be possible. Now, watch these two videos. God bless. Go get them and stay safe out there.